In terms of the progressions, you actually work from controlled environment, where we say controlled environment, your players know where you want them to go, what direction you want them to head in, and whether or not you want them to push in and put a push step in or a front brake step in, so it's all controlled. Then what happens is that you actually create it without ball skills, but uncontrolled. So then you add the reactivity to it. So you might be putting in a brake step into a push step, and then you're adding some sort of stimulus. So it might be like a hand going up, it might be a whistle that dictates left or right. It might be that you're calling blue cone or yellow cone so that they're firing off and they have to think quickly on the spot, send the message from the brain to the feet and react. Then you move to controlled environment with the ball or controlled environment with a racket or controlled environment, still with a ball. <laughs> so it's just different shape ball. Um, so then it's a controlled, so I know what I want you to do, but now I'm adding a ball skill. I'm either making a touch on the ball, I'm passing the ball, I'm doing a header in between my agility drill, whatever it might be. I'm putting in a swing or whatever it might be. Then the next progression on from that is now I've got the ball skill, I've got the racket skill, I've got the sport technical aspect, and I'm adding the reactivity, the stimulus. So there's four distinct progressions that you take when you're doing agility development with athletes. And it's really important that they get the foot strike right, that they learn how to break correctly, they learn how to eccentrically load the skeleton to protect my athlete from injuries so that when they move into, just like Matt was saying, when they move into the sports skill programmed and then unprogrammed and then sports skill unprogrammed agility, they're still going to use the correct mechanics. It's about a progression of learning that takes place over time. Does that help? And keep in mind too that you're all going to apply them into your own different sports. Okay, so it's just about learning that when we're doing lateral movements, we want to make sure that we are getting low. Because remember, the low is the loading of the musculature and the protection of the knee joint, the hip joint and the ankle joint. And this depth here in my braking force is what allows the concentric contraction, the shortening action of the glutes and the quadriceps and the calf to then push with force back into the opposite direction. So if I'm not braking low, if I'm braking high, then number one, I'm probably going to skid out. But number one, two, when I apply force, I'm going to go here, here, rather than push and push. And it's about using the skeletal force and the muscular force. But then apply it to your own sports.